Welcome to the channel. Today on the Maple Gunner, I'm going to be reviewing M&M Industries M10X DMR. But before I start, I want to take a moment to explain why there's been some time since my last video. Just after New Year's, I got COVID. That's right, I contracted General Tao's revenge. And then I shared it with my wife. She wasn't so happy about that. Nevertheless, I was unable to make or upload any content. However, my wife and I are both healthy now, well, at least healthier than we were before COVID, and I'm back to making content regularly. Now to get all the disclosures out of the way. I have no relationship with M&M Industries, Vortex, Surefire, or Magpul. I paid for this rifle and all the accessories myself, along with all the ammunition. I'm not a firearms expert. There are many people out there with far more knowledge of firearms than myself. However, I do endeavor to provide you with the most accurate information possible. Although I do have a military background, I was not a high-speed ninja. However, I do enjoy LARPing at the range making these videos. Before we dive into this review, I'm just going to clear the rifle and make sure it's safe. With that out of the way, let's get started. The M&M 10X is chambered in 7.62 by 39 and of course uses the standard double stacked AK magazines. Now this particular one I received with the rifle when I purchased the rifle and it's literally a five round magazine made to look like a 30 round magazine. This is because I live in Canada and that's the maximum amount of rounds we can have in a rifle magazine. So this isn't a 30 round pin to five, it's literally just a five round magazine that looks like a 30 round. It has a barrel length of 18.6 inches that has a twist rate of 1 and 9.45 inches. This is an ideal twist rate for the 7.62 by 39 cartridge. The inside of the barrel on this rifle is gas nitrided. What this does is it provides corrosion resistance and helps improve accuracy. M&M industry states that this rifle is capable of 0.7 MOA groups. And that's of course using match grade ammunition. However, um, I was able to consistently hit a four inch steel plate at 400 meters using Chinese surplus ammunition. The muzzle thread on this rifle is 5 by 24 which is going to give you a lot of options for various muzzle devices. I took the original one that came with the rifle off and, and put a different one on. We'll talk about that a little bit later. The rifle is 41 inches with the buttstock fully extended and by flipping the buttstock to the right it collapses down to 31 inches. The weight of the rifle without any optics or accessories is 7.9 pounds. And when you purchase the rifle, it doesn't come with any of those accessories and just the one magazine. The rifle does have a match grade trigger, however, and safety selector switch with the trigger pull of approximately 4.2 pounds. and there's very little take up before the trigger breaks. So this is actually a pretty nice trigger um, considering the cost of the rifle. The bottom receiver of this rifle is made from ion nitrided stainless steel. And what this does is it provides an increased wear resistance and surface hardness. The upper receiver slash handguard is made of 
aircraft grade aluminum. This makes for a strong upper receiver slash handguard and also provides excellent resistance to corrosion. The upper receiver slash handguard is also mil-spec type 3 hard anodized. What this does is provides a much harder, denser, thicker, and more abrasion uh, resistance coating than other uh, hard anodized processes. On top of the upper receiver slash handguard is an 18 inch mil spec Picatinny rail. And this is not attached, it's actually the way the upper receiver slash handguard is, uh, is machined, stamped or made, whatever, uh, with that Picatinny rail. So you're going to have no problems uh, retaining zero on this firearm. And what this does is it provides a lot of retail space for optics or any accessories you want to mount on uh, top of the firearm. The gas valve on the rifle is located right here just in front of the gas block itself. It has three positions. There's one, zero, and two. The first position is for standard operation. Uh, the two position allows more gas to be vented um, into the gas block, thus pushing harder on the, uh, the piston itself. There are a couple reasons why you'd want to use the number two position. One, if you're out shooting and it's extremely cold weather situation you're in, the ammunition may not be providing enough pressure for the rifle to properly cycle and function. And in that case, having the extra gas flowing through the gas tube and hitting the piston will uh, alleviate that issue. The other reason would be if the rifle's extremely dirty or you're using subsonic ammunition. So if the rifle gets really, really gummed up and um, that bolt's ha having a harder time moving through the receiver as it cycles, the extra gas will help with that. And if you're shooting, of course, subsonic ammunition, that's much less pressure than supersonic, and having that extra gas will make the rifle function um, more consistently. It is important to note that you're gonna wanna have the gas valve set to the number one position unless those circumstances are met and then you would switch it to the number two position giving you more um, more gas vented into the uh, the tube and pushing the piston. Otherwise what's going to happen is there's going to be a lot of increased stress on the internals of the firearm and that's going to make you need to replace them. The last position is the zero position and what that does is blocks the gas apertures. So there's zero gas being vented in through the gas tube and pushing on that piston. So what's going to happen is, is this rifle is going to function just like a repeating firearm. Every time you depress the trigger, you're going to have to pull back on the charging handle to get the next round into battery so you can fire it. And you'll need to do that every time. This rifle is also capable of being fired suppressed. However, M&M Industries recommends you contact them for assistance. The M10X DMR is also ambidextrous. So the safety selector switch is located on both the right side and the left side. The charging handle can also be switch from the left or right depending on your preference and this is really quick and simple to do all you do is you push in on the little release button at the end of uh, the charging handle and you'll turn that 180 degrees clockwise once that done it releases the uh, charging handle and you can just pull it out and from there you insert it on the other side and 
you do the opposite. You take that little um, release mechanism on the end of the charging handle, push in, and turn it 180 degrees counterclockwise. And now the charging handle is on the left. The pistol grip and the butt stock are made by Magpul. The stock in particular is Magpul's Zukov 5 position butt stock. So depending on your length of pull, you can adjust that. And to do that, all you do is push in right down here on the back. So a little lever you press and you adjust it to your desired position. Right now I have it collapsed all the way. So depending on your length of pull, um, you can make that adjustment. The butt stock also folds over to the right and on the left side there's a uh, release button that unlocks the butt stock and you can fold it all the way over to the right. And you can also note that you can fire uh, this rifle with the butt stock folded over to the right as it does not obstruct uh, the empty brass being kicked out. So what does all this techno babble mean? Well, for $2,000, you're getting an excellent rifle. Uh, it's made to a very high standard, it's high quality, and not only that, it's very easy to field strip, clean, and reassemble, which is also nice. All right, I'm going to show you what I got on my M10X DMR. We'll start right here at the top. I took the, uh, well actually I had a gunsmith take off the original uh, muzzle brake. It was on there so tight I couldn't get it off and I didn't want to damage the rifle so I had a professional do it. And uh, when he took it off he actually damaged it. Um, so I didn't bother keeping it otherwise I would have had that to show you. Um, what I did is I, uh, I put on a Surefire Warden direct thread muzzle device. And we'll talk about that for just a second here. The nice thing about this muzzle device is it reduces overpressure and sound from the rifle firing on both the left and right sides. And that's nice if you're at the fire range and you got guys into your immediate left and right, it's more comfortable for them. And also, uh, most of that sound is going out the front now as well, so it's, it's, I find it's a little bit quieter on the back end of the rifle also. Uh, another thing that that muzzle device does is it pretty much completely eliminates any uh, kick up from dust when you're firing in the prone position. So if you're using this rifle in a professional capacity, you're firing in the prone, luckily you're gonna be less likely to give your uh, position away. But in that case, you'd be using a suppressor and you'd be doing the same thing. On the bottom, at the front of the handguard, I have installed Magpul's M-Lock AFG angled the foregrip. I really do like that. It's very comfortable to hold for me when I'm holding the rifle. Um, but that is a personal preference thing. So, you know, if you have this rifle or any rifle, you just attach whatever you want on there. On the top, uh, I have a Vortex Strike Fire 2 Red Dot Optic. Um, it's not a very expensive optic. This is only around $200, but I do like it and it does work. Um, a couple of things I do like about it, it has unlimited eye relief, it's parallax free, and it's also very easy to adjust for windage and elevation. There's little caps on the top and the side. Uh, you unscrew them, and on the uh, top of the caps, there's a little notch that you can use um, to make your uh, windage and elevation adjustments, and they're in half MOA. And they also provide a nice positive click uh, when you're making those adjustments. Just behind the red dot, I have a Vortex micro magnifier. And this is a six times magnifier. So it'll take that one times image that's produced by the red dot and magnify it by six. And it has a real nice, uh, easy quick release flip mount. So when you don't want to use that magnification, you flip the magnifier to the side and just use your red dot. And now that I got it flipped, I can open up the rear cap. And on the Strike Fire 2, it comes with uh, lens covers that flip up, but they're also attached, so you don't have to worry about losing them. And then on the uh, 
the magnifier, it's just a basic scope type uh, lens cap cover that comes off. On the top and the right side of the magnifier, there's little caps you can unscrew and use them in the same manner as you would for the Strike Fire 2. However, you're not making um, actual windage and elevation adjustments. What you're doing is centering the image of the red dot in the center of the magnifier. And on the top, you would adjust that just like um, elevation. And then on the right side, you would adjust that just like windage. There's also sling QD mounts. There's two right here on the front of the handstock. There's one on the right side and the left side, and they're machined or cut right into the handguard, however they did that process. There's another one right on the rear trunnion, right here. However, it's only on the right side due to the fact that the stock folds to the right, so it's only on the left. Right here at the back of the butt stock, there's holes pre-drilled on the left and right side, and I've installed a uh, Groove Tech uh, steel uh, QD mount. Uh, it's pretty easy to put in there. I have it on a number of my other uh, firearms and I really do like these, so I, uh, I added one of them. Time for my opinion and thoughts on this rifle. I really believe that M&M Industries hit a home run with this product. However, there are a few things that I'd like to see changed in future iterations. The QD mounts on the front of the handguard, both left and right, they're not reinforced. They're literally just cut into the aluminum. And I'm concerned over time, these may not wear well. Uh, I'd like to see some sort of steel uh, reinforcement there. Moving backwards, the ejection port where the rounds are ejected from. Even though I've put over a thousand rounds through this rifle, there is some wear right along the top here where the rounds are kicked out and it's uneven. You can feel it there and it has taken a bit of the finish off. Again, uh, this comes back to where the upper receiver slash handguard is made out of aluminum. Um, I think some sort of steel reinforcement or something put there uh, would be much better uh, than the way it is on its own. Lastly, the safety selector switch. Even though this is a uh, match grade safety selector switch, uh, I think it's a bit too tight as when I go to um, take the firearm off safety, it's really easy for me to use my right thumb. However, when I want to put it back on safe, I have to break my grip to use my thumb or break my grip to use my index finger. What I'd like to see on future iterations of the rifle is uh, a selector switch that maybe has a little longer um, thumb selector so it's easier for me to, uh, or anyone, to actually uh, make contact and switch it from safe to fire and fire to safe. Or slightly less tight. I do realize that having a safety selector switch that's uh, nice and tight is safe for obvious reasons. I'm not looking for it to be so loose that the firearm can be easily switched from safe to fire inadvertently um, without the user realizing it. But I do think there is a little room to improve there. Besides all that, I know these opinions maybe seem as nitpicky. However, these are just my thoughts and opinions. Other than that, like I said, I really think M&M Industries hit a home run with this rifle. I like everything else about it, especially the trigger. For a uh, stock trigger on a rifle at this price point, the trigger is nice and crisp with little take up and it's not a stiff trigger. It's only 4.2 pounds approximately for trigger pull. I appreciate 
all of you who have stayed to the end of this video. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Right now, that is the best way to help this channel out, especially with YouTube's algorithm. And also, I really do enjoy reading your comments, so keep commenting. Thanks for watching. Get out there and get good.